it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to talk about 12 tips to help you work with novelty yarn. I have grabbed a whole bunch of novelty yarn from my own yarn stash, and as you can see, it is a wide variety of different fibers. We have some really fluffy, kind of pillowy fibers. We have some recycled uh, sari ribbon. We have uh, fur, we have eyelash yarn, we have scrubby yarn, all kinds of different things can fall under the novelty yarn category. And so when I was coming up with these tips and thinking about this video and these fibers, I looked up the actual definition of novelty yarn and I found on Wikipedia a pretty, it's a pretty broad definition, but it may help us to understand a little bit more. So I actually printed it out and you can see when we read this that you'll see what I mean about it being a wide range. So novelty yarns, as defined, uh, they include a wide variety of yarns made with unusual features, structure, or fiber composition, such as slubs, inclusions, metallic or synthetic fibers, laddering, and varying thickness introduced during production. And that is from Wikipedia. So as you can see, and from my visual here and the definition, it really encompasses a whole lot of things. Uh, when we think about yarn, uh, quote, regular yarn, we think about a yarn that has, like this one, a smoother strand. This is more traditional yarn. But manufacturers sometimes will add things like little blobs of color, uh, different fibers. You can see on this one, or maybe not, they're really small. There's little tiny sequins. You can have beads throughout your yarn. You can have uh, repurposed materials like this uh, ribbon uh, that's been recycled from sar uh, sari fabric. And things like uh, fibers that come out from the, the strands or the plies, like this one, that this is uh, Red Heart Fur. So you can see this strand is very unique. Uh, this is considered eyelash yarn and it looks, it's kind of rainbowy, but the strands are coming out from the middle. They're almost like little silky threads. And then this is a Red Heart Scrubby Sparkle, and you can see that it's very, very textured for use with uh, kitchen projects. So, that being said, you can see all of the different textures, but how in the world do you work with this yarn, with all of this texture? And I'm gonna give you a couple tips because a lot of you ask me these questions. I can't see my stitches. I'm having trouble working with this. Do I need to be an advanced knitter or crocheter to use this yarn? So I'm gonna give you these tips and hopefully that will help you uh, get a little bit of a better idea and some, some help with working with some of this yarn that's out there. So the first tip is to choose a contrasting hook or needle color than the yarn color that you're using. So for example, if I had this very light color yarn here, this the Red Heart Scrubby, I um, might want to grab a dark color hook so that when I'm using the yarn, there's a lot of contrast and I can see the yarn and the hook and what I'm doing a little bit better. So that's our first tip. So likewise, if you're using a dark yarn, you might want to try uh, a lighter color, maybe like a, a lighter bamboo color, for example. The second tip is lighting. Make sure when you're working with yarn like this that your lighting is very good. Natural lighting is fabulous and one of the very best, but you can also get really nice uh, task lighting made especially for crafters to help you see. And likewise, some of these craft lights will also have a magnifying feature to help you see all of the stitches. So here is a knitting project that I have, and this is a sneak peek, so you can see something that's coming soon. But um, you can see, now I'm going against my tip one. This is a light needle with light yarn, but you can still see the contrast. But uh, good lighting will help you see where all these stitches are. See how fluffy it is? You can have a hard time seeing sometimes where some of them start and stop. So good lighting is very, very important with working with uh, novelty yarn. So for tip three, this is something that's really helpful. If you have a yarn that's completely impossible to see what you're doing, some of these eyelash yarns have so many little fibers that come off of them, it's really hard to see. So a really good tip that you can do to actually see what you're doing is to grab a piece of, quote, regular yarn, one of these smoother strands. This is a worsted weight uh, acrylic, just a really straightforward, very smooth strand. 
And what you can do is uh, grab your hook. Now I'm using the dark hook like we mentioned in a previous tip, but hold the strands together and that way you'll be able to see what you're doing. Now as a side note, I have no idea what this is. This is some mystery eyelash yarn that I had left over from something. If any of you recognize this, I would love to know what this is. So if this looks familiar to any of you, please let me know in the comments below. Sometimes we, you know, the yarn labels fall off and we end up with these mystery balls of yarn. So what you can do is hold the yarn together and then when you work with the yarn, let me just insert my hook. Now I went up a hook size. This is a larger hook than I would normally use for this yarn or this yarn, but I'm using them together. So I'm using a little bit of a larger hook, but let's make a little chain and we can see what a difference that makes. So with the, the worsted weight yarn, see how you can easily see that chain and those stitches. Now let's drop the worsted weight acrylic yarn and only use the eyelash yarn. Now I'm getting all tangled because of all these strands. Um, so we're going to drop this yarn and I'm going to make continue my chain and just show you the difference. Okay, so keep going with the eyelash yarn, just the eyelash yarn, and I just want to show you the difference. Okay. Now you can kind of see, we are using strong, I have my strong lights on, uh, my studio lights, but you can see the difference. See how the eyelash yarn, it's harder to see those chains. You can kind of see them, but with the uh, worsted weight acrylic uh, added on uh, to when I, when I held the strands together, you can see those chains really, really well. So that's a, um, a good tip if you're having a lot of trouble working with, uh, a certain yarn. Okay, so we'll put those aside for a minute. Let's move on to tip four. So if you're having difficulty crocheting into the stitches, they can be very difficult to see with the fuzzy yarn. Let me grab this project. This is also a little sneak peek of something that I'm working on. And I shared this yarn and my hook on Instagram the other day. Um, if you don't follow us on Instagram, it's we're at Fiber flux. So stop by and say hello, definitely. But I shared this on Instagram the other day, and this is a very, very fuzzy yarn. This is um, called Sabilla by Adria Phil, and it's a very uh, loopy, fuzzy. It almost has also some eyelash fibers, so it makes for a very fluffy, cloud like fabric, but it can be a little bit tricky to work with. So you want to make sure that. Um, you're using the adequate hook size to kind of open up the fabric a little bit. But if you're having trouble crocheting into the stitches, so if we look at this project, you can see sort of the stitch up top. See, here's our post. These are treble crochet stitches. And this is our little stitch at the top. Now look how much easier it is to crochet in the spaces. So try crocheting into the spaces versus the stitches whenever possible because it's very, very dis easy to see where you need to go into the spaces. The stitches are a little bit more camouflaged. So that's tip number four. And that's also easier to feel uh, your way along versus the stitches. So try that. Also, we want to, uh, let's grab one of our yarn balls that has uh, a label on it. This is uh, fur from Red Heart and it's very, very uh, highly textured. It's a fun yarn. So my tip five is to choose the recommended hook size or even go up a size or two because that will help you, like I mentioned before, kind of open up the fabric and really see what you're doing. So the recommended hook size can be found on the back of the yarn label. You can look at it for both knitting and crochet. So for this particular yarn, they recommend a US 17, very thick needles, and a Q crochet hook. So you can go um, stick with that recommended hook size. Now, when they come up with these recommendations, you know, people have tried this and, and, and looked at the, the different fabrics that are yielded and, you know, it goes through different, um, I guess, tests and to see what the recommended hook size is. But as a crafter, I would encourage you to experiment a little bit. Go up a hook size or two, go up a needle size or two, just to see if you can see the stitches a little bit better if you're having trouble. So for tip five, try the recommended hook size or even a size or two bigger. Okay, so tip six is uh, we want to talk about tension now. So I'm gonna go back to my project and insert my hook. 
and this is my Furls Candy Shop hook, in case you're wondering. Isn't it pretty? But anyway, I did a, a review on this hook a couple videos back if you want to check it out. So one of the tips that um, I wanted to also share is to, when you're working with really textured yarn like this, to try and knit and crochet as loosely as possible. So try to keep it nice and loose as you work, kind of like what I'm doing here. Just hold your hook very comfortably, hold your yarn very comfortably. Try not to keep things tight because that will tighten up all these holes and spaces and everything that you need to be able to see very well when you're working with this yarn. If you're having trouble uh, seeing the stitches, uh, looseness still helps, but you can what you can do, and I do this quite often, is to feel your way into the stitch. So we're at the next stitch, now I can kind of find that loop with my thumb, okay? And then work my stitch into there. And then as we approach the next stitch, just kind of feel for that loop at the top. Or like I mentioned before, just work right into the spaces and it makes it a lot easier, okay? So for tip seven, when we're working, uh, let's hop over to this project so I can show you this tip. When we are knitting, for example, it's really important to keep track of all your stitches. Unlike crochet, we only have one active loop at a time for traditional crochet, not Tunisian, but uh, for regular crochet, you, you usually only have one active loop at a time, um, unless you're doing like a cluster or puff stitch. But anyway, with knitting, you're going to have lots and lots of stitches on your needle. So what you want to do as you're working through your project is to keep track of how many stitches are on your needle and to make sure that is uh, consistently happening with each row. So if you have 20 stitches on here, make sure the next row isn't 19 and the next row isn't 18 because your, your project will start to to change its shape and sizing. So just keep track of the stitches uh, on each row. So count them as you go along. And then also uh, for tip eight, kind of piggybacking on what I just said, make sure that, um, so if we look at this, it's very fluffy, it's very squishy, but it's impossible to see how many rows we've done. By looking at this fabric, are you able to see the rows? Not really. Um, at all. So if you need to do a certain amount of rows, just get a little piece of paper and you can keep track of how many rows you've done if that's something you need to keep track of. Now if you want to get fancy and you like gadgets with your um, projects, you can use something too called a row counter. And this has a hole in the center and what you can do is just slip your row counter right onto the back of your knitting needle and when you're working and you get to a new row, you can just simply turn to the next row and keep track of how many rows. Or you can just use a piece of paper. It's totally up to you. The other thing that I wanted to share for tip nine is we want to stick with simple patterns, easy simple patterns with basic stitches. We don't want to be doing with something like this, you don't want to be doing, for example, like an intricate cable stitch because you're going to lose a lot of that. You want to pick yarns that have more, smoother yarns that have more stitch definition for really complicated um, projects like that. So when you're using novelty yarn, something that's really fluffy like this, you want to keep it basic, keep it simple, and uh, keep those patterns nice and easy to help you work with the yarn a little bit better. So for tip 10, I wanted to share, um, let me grab a couple of these. Sometimes if you're having trouble with very slippery, uh, maybe like a metal hook or metal needles where this, the stitches can slide around, um, try using a bamboo or wood hook and needle and that will help keep these stitches, um, it's very grippy, so it'll help keep your stitches in place and allow you to see what's going on. And when you slide a stitch somewhere, it will most likely, you know, stay in place a little bit nicer than uh, something metal. So um, metal is nice if you want to speed things up a little bit, but if you really need to keep these um, stitches in place and be able to see them. I have some bamboo needles I grabbed. This is a rosewood hook. So try wood and see if that helps. It, it might help you out too. Okay, so for tip 11, um, what I wanted to mention is to, if, you're, if your novelty yarn is really frustrating you, if you're about to like throw your project out the window, try just using 
uh, the Novelty yarn for accents. Maybe use it along the edge of a blanket uh, for a round or two, or maybe put it uh, at the top of a sock, just a little fluffy accent piece, or maybe just a really small project. Uh, for example, I'm gonna show you this picture now. These hair ties uh, can be found on the Fiberflux blog, and I also have a video. I'll put the link below, but um, just to crochet around something really small and fast. So just keep it simple. Uh, keep the project small if it's really frustrating you. The other thing I wanted to share is that sometimes when we're using novelty yarn, and let me grab a piece of this. Um, actually, we can use this down here. Sometimes when you have novelty yarns, the uh, pieces can kind of untwist and come apart, especially if you have lots of different fibers happening in one strand of yarn. So what you might wanna do is grab your scissors, and let me just grab my scissors, and when you start a project, when you're casting on or you're doing your starting chain, just give the end a fresh cut to um, just neaten things up a bit. And then what I like to do sometimes if it's really coming apart a lot is to just put a tiny little knot at the bottom of your yarn. And that will keep things from coming apart. Because you can see this particular yarn, this is Buttercup by Red Heart, by the way. This um, is actually multiple parts. So you have this like fluffy white stuff and then you have this like thread with uh, blobs of color on it. So that's, that stuff can come apart a little bit. But if you put it just a tiny, give it a fresh cut, Put a tiny little knot, it'll keep everything in place and keep your yarn from unraveling. So those are my 12 tips for working with Novelty Yarn. I'm really curious uh, to see what all of you think about Novelty Yarn. What are your favorites? Do you avoid it altogether? Do you enjoy working with it? What kind of projects have you worked with it, uh, worked uh, with the yarn on? And um, if you have any tips that you like to add, we'd love to hear them. The Fiberflux community is very interactive, and please share those tips below in the comments. We'd love to hear them. So that's it. Those are my 12 tips for working with Novelty Yarn. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.